happens at the moment of death. So here I caution the listener. Here we are in what is given to beginners in the Catholic faith. The Catholic Church has not yet made its council, which would set up theology, which is called eschatology, the hour of death, the end of the world. It has only given a few landmarks. On the other hand, there have been councils to define who Christ is, true God and true man, who is the Trinity. So from now on, all that is going to be said and well, these are reconstructions from the saints who are not infiable from doctors of the church, who are not infiable from the whole of the faith. And so, from there, it's up to everyone to form their own opinion, but this is how the Holy Spirit apparently leads the Church to its understanding. Indeed, the Pope Benedict XVI, for the first time in his encyclical Special V at number 47, presents in the Church without making the faith what happens in death. He states, Certain recent intelligence are of the opinion that in the dead passage, this passage which cannot be timed in earthly time, therefore which lasts perhaps for about three minutes, but which will appear to the dying soul to last for about three days, in this passage we see Christ in all his glory which appears, and the vision of Christ is so overwhelming that in its light we discover our own filth, our own sin. We are upset and then we also understand by seeing him that there is only mercy we see that in him who heals that he is going to heal us he who becomes our advocate so on that day many find salvation the pope explicitly states they discover love for this god and begin to love him they also find healing there the pope's text is considerably more complex than that to the point that some theologians are struggling to understand exactly what he meant. But obviously this novelty, it actually comes from Saint Faustina, from Marc Robin and other theologians who formalized it, it's essential. So that means what happens at the hour of death, basically all the texts that announce the return of Christ in his glory and where Christ states this generation is not going to pass until all is achieved, the return of the Son of the Man will be like lightning from the east to the west. No one will be able to miss it. He says so in St. Matthew chapter 24. Well, all these texts which we have taken for centuries to announce the return of Christ to the end of the world, to the last generation, also speak of what happens at our end, our individual end, the hour of our death. This is to a steering event. It is something absolutely overwhelming. I must add that St. Thomas Aquinas, who did not believe it, that he thought that he was coming back as a judge, wrote all his theological sum with the idea that death was an instant. When towards the end of his life, he had an apparition of Christ while he was celebrating Mass. He was so upset that he wanted to grab his theology, his sum of theology, and burn it. He said to Brother Reginald, this is only hey." Fortunately, Brother Reginald prevented him from doing so, and he never desired to write again since that day. In fact, it is very likely that seeing Christ return in all his glory, the logic of what he said, death is an instant, nothing occurs, so many people will go to hell, sometimes without faults of their part. The logic of what he stated, based on the definition of death, he had struck him as illogical. It was evident Christ was not going to damn people who did not know his name, nor poor weak sinners whom they had no time to repent, or even children marked with original sin on the pretext that Adam and Eve had separated them from him. It was obvious that if we close the door of salvation, he would open a window, and the window is the passage that is dead.